Hi there. My name is Cheryl Blake, and I've been attending PCC for about 11 years now. One of the things that I've been involved in in the last couple of years is thinking about how mental health and mental illness, mental health issues do affect those of us uh, in our community here. So one of the things that has uh, happened in the last year is that a number of us from uh, PCC took a course called Sanctuary, which was equipping churches and leaders to actually incorporate mental health issues into the everyday lexicon of uh, the church life and church community. Since then, uh, you may have seen in the weekly bulletins that you get from Joan that we have determined that we were going to start a group called The Gathering. The Gathering meets on um, Thursday nights uh, bi-weekly at seven o'clock, basically from seven to nine. And its purpose is to just walk alongside folks who may be experiencing the impact of mental illness, mental health issues, uh, stress concerns, life changes. You know, when we talk about mental health, there's a lot of stigma that's attached. As soon as you hear that word mental health or mental illness, automatically you think, oh my goodness, it's those crazy people. Um, and that's really not true at all. And what we're hoping in uh, starting a group called The Gathering is that we will begin to destigmatize and to make PCC a safe place to deal with whatever you're dealing with. Mental health issues are on a huge continuum. With one, uh, at one end, you have the uh, major psychiatric axis one diagnoses of, and disorders of schizophrenia, bipolar, and things like that, uh, and uh, major psychotic episodes, often which require hospitalizations, and then long-term management strategies to uh, do well in community. But uh, at the other end, you have something that's maybe as simple as a life stress or um, too much on your plate all at one time and you can't think straight and you, you forget why you walk into a room and those types of things and everything else in between. You, you may recall that um, even in uh, Kubler-Ross's uh, stages of grief and grieving, uh, around death and dying in your family. One of the stages of grief is actually called depression. Well, depression is a mental health uh, diagnosis. It's a mental illness concern. Uh, things like sleep deprivation, things like trauma, things like major change in your life, whether you're going through um, a loss of uh, a job and financial insecurity. Uh, we talk a lot about food insecurity here at, at uh, PCC and the, the kitchen uh, is one way that we look at helping folks with that. But folks who are experiencing food insecurity are quite likely experiencing uh, mental health issues and, and impact on their life. Uh, folks who are experiencing a divorce, folks who have moved, folks who um, have lost a spouse and they've been on their own for a long time. You know, there's all kinds of things. Kids and, and youth, um, particularly, may be exposed to bullying at school. That's going to create um, a, a mental health issue within not only that child or youth, but within that family. Uh, family conflict, substance abuse, a whole variety of things um, come in and fall into that definition and category. So what we're hoping to do uh, is not to provide clinical treatment or therapy, but to, to provide support for there to be a safe environment for you to continue on your journey, whether it's a simple seasonal short period of time uh, situation that may just resolve itself without uh, too many interventions, or if you're living with a chronic and persistent uh, axis one diagnosis or disorder, um, and anything in between, you're, you're welcome. We're looking for a safe place, uh, a, a place for you to realize that Jesus is there with you in the midst of your circumstances, in the midst of your emotions, in the midst of what's going on in your mind that perhaps doesn't turn off when you want to go to sleep at night, and that we want to be the hands and feet of Jesus and be around you and support you and walk with you, even if it's just walking alongside you in silence, that you have a place to know that you're not alone. You're not going through whatever is happening in your life in isolation. 
other people may be experiencing the same things, or if not, they may have in the past, or they simply want to walk alongside you to provide the support and help you to know that not only are you not physically alone, there are other people around, but Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit are walking alongside you too. We believe in the Bible. We believe that um, uh, Jesus is very um, concerned about your mental health. We know that mental health is rampant. The statistics from the Canadian Association for Mental Health tell us that one in four Canadians is going to be impacted by a mental health issue uh, in these days. And they've recently updated that because of the stress of COVID uh, and the pandemic and the isolation and all of the other things that are happening. They have updated those figures to one in three. So if we were sitting in church, then that would be every third person in the row would be, you know, potentially suffering from some type of mental illness or uh, mental health problem. So we want you to know that it's okay. We, many of us have been there. Uh, we want to walk with you. There's, there isn't a wrong answer when it comes to mental health. You're not less spiritual or less than. Uh, of a Christian because you have a mental health issue. Uh, it's not wrong to take medication. Sometimes God heals us. Uh, he's the great physician, but one of the ways that he heals us and, and uh, helps us in our problems is through doctors and therapists and medication and other treatments. Um, there are even folks, Christian folks, who um, utilize and uh, with the blessing of, of the Father experience uh, electroconvulsive therapy or what we used to be shock therapy. It's definitely changed from what it was 50 years ago and, and only administered in institutions, but there's a lot of that going on and it actually helps people cope with life and to be able to carry on and hold a job and raise a family and do all of those things. So I hope that um, these things that I'm saying are, are causing you to maybe think differently about what a group like The Gathering could do for you. You're more than welcome to join us. Uh, we'd love to have you. We probably um, will want to limit the group to about 12 people, but we're not there yet, so there's lots of room for lots of you. Um, and I thought maybe I'd just close really quickly with a little bit of my own story so that you know that mental health is not just a certain type of stereotype individual. I'm a person, I'm 61 years old, I'm married and I have children and grandchildren. I hold a job with the government of British Columbia and uh, I'm a, a participant in the PCC community. But I have suffered with depression for many, many, many years. I have experienced severe trauma in my life on multiple occasions. I take medication. I take uh, antidepressants every day. I've tried to not take them, but it didn't go well. So I needed to know that I had to get back on medication and I probably will be on meds for the rest of my life. Um, it's not a problem, I don't think you know, those of you who know me may think differently, but I don't think I'm weird. I don't think I'm crazy. Um, but mental health has impacted my own family uh, significantly. I think in hindsight, there may be some things with my parents that were mental health uh, issues that were never even figured out. My children suffer with anxiety and uh, ADHD and things like that. My husband, uh, suffers from depression, and I know that he won't mind that I'm talking about that because he'll share that with you himself quite readily. Um, and so it, it, it's, it's all over. I, I don't believe that anybody could say that they don't know anybody who suffers from a mental health issue. It may be just that that hasn't been disclosed to you by people that you know. So I hope that you will prayerfully consider joining us. If you don't join us and you don't feel you need to, I'd ask you to pray for us. I would ask that you would hold us up in, in your prayers before the Lord and that you would pray not only for the people in the group, but that you would pray that our community becomes more welcoming, more inclusive, less stigmatizing, and that we see that we normalize the fact that we're all in this together in a different way when it comes to mental health. We've talked about that with COVID, 
but we all need each other and we need to be um, walking side by side and that's the purpose of the gathering. So I really hope to see you there. Thanks, bye for now.